I have so much fun. I really do. I really enjoy what I do. I think that's a big key to life is enjoying what you do. And if you can enjoy it, it just makes things better. Mike Golden State Picker. If you're new to my channel, I am out of San Jose, California, and I'm having a lot of fun reselling lots of stuff from books to tennis rackets, golf clubs, you name it. I sell it, and I'm having a fun time doing it. During those gap years that I call 60 to 65, uh, they're kind of that fill-in years right now for maybe official retirement. I don't know. I don't think I'll ever retire. I think I will continue on my journey of reselling and YouTube. I'll probably be 90 standing right here doing videos. Who knows? You never know. You never know. I have so much fun. I really do. I really enjoy what I do. I think that's a big key to life is enjoying what you do. And if you can enjoy it, it just makes things better. There are down days. Let's, let's be honest, you know, uh, but there's more up days than down days. And when that happens, then things are good. It's tricky sometimes. Hey, we can't sit there and say it's all basically roses, right? It's never always that, but it is a lot of fun, a lot of fun. So today, hey, we're going to add another section onto this video because I have a few items that I want to show you that I, I can't make a complete video out of because I'm packing quickly. I like to ship my stuff in one day. Bang, out it goes. So if I don't have a complete video to make, I just ship it. I thought, well, why don't I make a few and add it on to the end? So you'll see this section and then that section also. Okay, so a few things. Ah, wow, how's things been out there for everybody? It is still mildly, it, it's kind of trepid, and, you know, just kind of, eh, nothing great, nothing bad, good days and bad. Books have been picking up a little bit more consistent there. Uh, eBay is, you know, it's been bouncing around a little bit, but hey, it's close to tax season. This video might come out close to tax season, but it is, and, and you can't deny that, right? We're going to talk about an article. If you're new here, we always have uh, something occasionally that's interesting. I got a new article I want to talk about, and I got a song for the day. That's another thing here at this channel. Occasionally, I like to drop in a classic rock song. That's me, and I'm an old classic rocker. The channel isn't always about what we found and what we sold. We like to throw a little bit of life in, too. It kind of gets dull if you just constantly show stuff. I mean, you got to throw it in. You got to explain it. You got to say, hey, this is what it's about. Help people become better at reselling, inspire people to this can be done. We talk about it all the time. Uh, just we talk about books we find, books that we've read that help us, hey, help us get through life. It's tricky out there every day. It's something new, right? Every single day. So anyhow, let's get right after it. Let's get into a few items we sold and we'll cut and talk about an article, which I think is interesting. You know, I like doing books. And this book here is a science fiction book, and this is by the Three Hearts and th well, this is by Paul Anderson, Three Hearts and Three Lions, um, fantasy, uh, all that kind of stuff. Paul Anderson, and this particular book got twenty five plus six dollars shipping. First editions, first edition. I'm going to do a video on first editions because first editions are tricky. They're very tricky. You can think you have it. The cover is exactly the same. Everything but it's not the one. I mean, I can't tell you how many times I've got excited when I saw a book and I go, that's it, that's it. And nope, it's a book club edition. Those are probably the most popular and I miss the first edition. I, I mean, that's the holy grail for us is first editions that really go for some good money or book sets. Uh, people ask me, what was the biggest first edition that I got? The biggest first edition uh, was $500 for a Jean Muir um, first edition that came out of England. And uh, that's what I got for that. And again, I tried to auction it, not, and I got about, didn't get any real bites on it, but I ended up selling it for 500. The Star Trek script is in a book that sold for $750. So there's a lot of interesting stuff out there. And first editions, man, I, I'm, I'm, I'm waiting now, you know, uh, I'm going to show you something too that I found here in a second and how, how I use this to try and get some more ideas uh, coming through to the, to the store, that kind of thing. So basically, uh, I'm going to put the picture up here of it. 
Uh, yesterday I put, well, a couple of days ago, I put an ad out on Nextdoor. I don't know if you have Nextdoor in your area, but it's a great way to advertise that you buy things. Uh, I put in there, I buy book collections, albums, CDs, uh, media, all types of stuff, stereo equipment. And then I break it down in the ad a little bit and I say, hey, look, I'm looking for complete book editions. I'm looking for examples of, you know, lots of Easton books, Franklin books, whatever. Uh, breaking it down to try and see if somebody's willing to sell some of their uh, their stuff. Yeah, times are tough out there right now, and there are people looking, hey, to part ways with some things. So keep that in mind. Use stuff like Nextdoor if you have it, Facebook Marketplace. Um, remember what we said, networking, networking, networking. You've got to do it. Get your business card out. People ask, what is on my business card? Well, it's not much. It just says, hey, I'm Mike. I'm, uh, I, I don't use the YouTube channel. I said, Mike, and I buy this. I don't tell them I'm a reseller. It says, Mike, my phone number, my email. I buy uh, DVDs, stereo, whatever you want. Put it on there. Go to Vistaprint for $9.99 for 500 of them. And off and running you go. I'm going to put up what I got yesterday. I put it out and she contacted me back, said, hey, I have some stuff. And the last item she mentioned, because it took a while in the conversation, was um, metal CDs, heavy metal CDs. And then she said, well, I think I have 40 or 60 is what she first said. And then she goes, well, wait, let me count. She, and she said she had 100. And uh, I said, well, how much do you want for them? And she said, I, I want $40 for them. Now, there is different genres of metal music. There is thrash metal, death metal, indie metal. There's just heavy. I mean, it's just like every category, okay? And so she had this. And I knew some of the bands are very obscure. When you don't know a genre, it looks almost like hieroglyphics to you. Uh, but uh, my son helped me out a little bit here, and I got them. And I got 130 of them. You saw them there. And what I do is this, guys. So after I'm done shooting it, I pre-box it. I label it and everything. So now they're ready to go. Um, another thing is, is don't be afraid to put them up for top dollar. Somebody might give you a best offer. That's another tip. I always set best offer on all of my ads, but I do not set the limit. You know, I let it go because I want to see if people are interested. So I put this up for, I think, 600 bucks, okay? Let it, I'll let it go. I'll see what happens. It might not sell for 600. It might get me an offer at 450, okay? So that's another tip is don't be afraid to put it up and let it run for a little bit. And these are, this is quality. It's not, it's not garbage. So it should sell pretty well. So keep that in mind when you're trying to generate some more sourcing avenues or ways, all right? Let's go into this item. Ooh, looks like a Crocodile Dundee. Remember that? Crocodile Dundee. Uh, great. Paul Hogan. I don't know. Is Paul Hogan alive? Let me know in the comments. I, I haven't checked it out if he's still alive. But Paul Hogan type hat. I got it at a, a garage sale last summer. Two bucks. It took me forever. It is by the company Eddie Hat. Eddie Hat. Nice felt lining in there. I didn't get a ton of money. I finally just let it go. I sold it for $20. $21 plus $20 shipping. Shipping here isn't going to be quite $20. Uh, it should fit in a nice small box, probably $13 to $15, I'm hoping. Make a couple bucks on shipping. You hear me talk about that a lot here. Um, let's do one more. Can we do one more? Yeah, let's do one more, and then we'll get to the story. Uh, out of the bin of books, Nintendo Power Magazines, Okay. And um, the magazine sold for $24 plus $12 shipping. Let me tell you guys, when it comes to Nintendo, anime, all kinds of this kind of stuff, some of these old gaming guides can go for a lot of money. Certain ones, Mario, that kind of thing, they can go for hundreds. So keep your eye out for them at thrift sales, garage sales, all that kind of stuff. Again, I keep waiting. There'll be I'll I'll find one or two down the road. I keep telling my my friends, hey, I'm gonna find that. I'll find that eventually. <laughs> That's the confidence you have, the confidence that you have in doing this kind of thing. You gotta have it. Hey, nothing wrong with saying I'm gonna get one of those one day. All right, ad. I mean ad. <laughs> it's not an ad. All right, this is an article. Here's the article. I, I love looking at, at various articles. I don't get my news from uh, CNN and Fox. Basically, I don't watch them anymore. I, I mean, it just got kind of monotonous. So anyhow, 
Uh, I get most of my news off of offline. You know, on, oh my gosh, am I struggling online? I get most of my news online. Anyhow, I ran across this article about Starbucks, and Charles Schultz has come back. A oh, Howard Charles Schultz. Oh my goodness, I'm going from peanuts to Starbucks. Wow, Howard Schultz. You see how fast this mine goes? It's just grinding away. But Howard Schultz has come back as the CEO of Starbucks again. I think he left once, came back, and he's back again because Starbucks is kind of struggling. Well, I thought it was curious because here's the article. Olive oil in coffee. New Starbucks line, a curiosity in Italy. He takes it over there. He's not going to take it here. He takes it over to Italy and he goes, hey, you know what? Uh, he was at a winery, a coffee thing or a winery or something. He says, putting olive oil in coffee is hardly a tradition in Italy, but that didn't stop Starbucks interim CEO Howard Schultz from launching a series of beverages that do just that in Milan, the city that inspired his coffee house empire. So he went back. He said, hey, maybe maybe olive oil will will catch on. The coffee olive oil concoction echoing a keto-inspired trend of adding butter to coffee, only with a sugary twist, has provoked both amusement and curiosity among Italians. He calls it uh, olito, meaning oiled in Italian. Uh, it's going to be interesting. <laughs> it's going to be interesting to see. You know, it's like throw something up on the wall, see if it sticks. And if it does, you got to hit and people come running. I mean, I remember, look, guys, let's be honest. I mean, I remember when I was doing a busboy and a waiter when I was in high school. And the only thing we had was a black cup of coffee with cream and sugar. Pretty much. There were some spots. But it's amazing how Howard Schultz turned a coffee business into a international phenomenon. Branching out and has now created many, many coffee stores. I don't drink a lot of coffee. You wouldn't, you wouldn't know that from the hyperness that I have, but I don't drink a lot of coffee. Occasionally, I do have a coffee, but it's rare. Do you have a favorite coffee place in your town? Let me know in the comments. I will tell you mine if I go and have to have a coffee and it's available. It's a coffee company called Phil's. I think it's P-H-I-L-Z. And they, they do it right in front of you, usually through a filter. So it's pretty good. So let me know if you have a favorite coffee place uh, that you go to, right? Occasionally, I go to Starbucks when we're on the road or something, if it's there. And, uh, you know, it's interesting. My wife drinks more coffee than I do. All right, let's get on to a couple more items that we sold. Nothing fantastic. By the way, all of these items total for $509 for about a day and a half. Eh, not ripping, but I, I'm happy. It's wintertime, very cold outside. It is, uh, I can tell you right now, too, in California, it's been strange. It's been two months of strange, basically. Garage sales are non-existent. Donations are way, way down in many of the stores. So it's tough. You just got to keep grinding, guys. Don't give up. Do not give up. Out of the bin of books, El Cid and then the fall of the Roman Empire. Nothing great. I just couldn't throw them away. They're just really cool. They're, they're uh, DVDs, right? And they have the DVDs and a booklet. I just took an offer of $16.50 with $8 shipping. Should be about spot on on the shipping. Still going to come out with about 12 bucks of profit. I'll take it. Hey, never know. You just got to keep, keep, keep grinding. Those little sales start to add up. Then a big one hits. Then another big one hits. And that really works out. All right. We are going to show you something I don't have up here. Uh, it is Harlequin, the second time around. The first time around, I got a huge lot. Then I got a smaller lot. And this one, I was a little more wise. I'm putting them up to move them, basically. And this set sold for ninety uh, for $100. There were 95 newer, the Intrigue series, um, Harlequin books. Got $100 plus free shipping. Basically, it's free money. Got it out of my bin of books. Got to take it. You can't leave it there. And then push it out. Push it out. All right, we're going to do this one and get to the song of the day because I think this is it. Here we go. We got two more after this and the song of the day. Another knife. If you saw me, I sold a Henkel's chef's knife, and this is just another 8-inch knife. Um, I got them at Goodwill. They had put them in a silver rake, silverware tray, had some other things in them, and there were two knives, and I think I ended up paying like $9 minus a dollar, so about, yeah, about 8 bucks, something like that. 
Sold this one for $22.50 and $12 shipping. The other one sold for $40. So I made $62 off of that $9 investment. That's how you think, guys. Just keep grinding those dollars away. Profit is profit. Sexy or non-sexy. Hey, money is sexy. It's green. Okay? So keep that in mind. All right. Up next, song of the day. You'll know this guy's name. I hope you do. Uh, comes from a band in the 60s and I think the early 70s. The band's name is Traffic. All right, now everybody's going, okay, who is it? Is it Steve Winwood? Is it Jim Capaldi? Uh, no, it's Dave Mason. Dave Mason, the great guitar player, Dave Mason. Uh, he was in Traffic. Very young group. When they, were, when they first started out, they were very, very young. So was uh, Free. Free was very young also. The bass player for Free was like 15 years old. Anyhow, Dave Mason, uh, I have liked uh, Traffic, 40,000 Headmen, all kinds of stuff. And uh, this song is by Bob Dylan. It's all along the Watchtower, but it's off of a certain album. Go to Apple Play or maybe even uh, Spotify and look for Dave Mason at the XM Studio Live and listen to his version of All Along the Watchtower. Very, very cool. What you forget is Dave Mason played on All Along the Watchtower for who? Who was he on? It was Jimi Hendrix, right? Jimi Hendrix's version is probably, they say, one of the top 10 songs of all time, but it was written by Bob Dylan, the great Bob Dylan. Me and my friend Roger, we have, you know, we text some of the craziest stuff. We're, we're hooked on right now. Uh, um, Bob Dylan's uh, Everything is Broken. <laughs> and we just, uh, it's silliness. It's silliness. But that's fun. That's the fun part of life. You got a couple buddies and you talk about just crazy, silly stuff. So check out Dave Mason, guys. All right, up next, we're going to have to show you this one. And then one item that I have to show you because it's too big. All right, if you remember, I had my car broken into, and I was down and out, <laughs> depressed. And I had to go uh, do some stuff, and it was just a bummer. And I decided to get rid of my blues by going thrifting. So I went thrifting that day, and the good Lord <laughs> shined down on me. And what did I get? Five tennis rackets. Remember, I got five tennis rackets as I told you about my horrible day with the car, with the truck, the truck, car, truck. Uh, and I got tennis rackets. I got five of them. They are Wilson, and they're all Roger Federer, okay? Uh, the Roger Federer Autograph Series. This one here is really nice. It just sold, so I'm waiting payment, but I wanted to show you to it. Show you it. It will get, it should get paid for. Look for tennis rackets. These happened to be at that Goodwill, and they were all five stacked together. I knew right away why eyes touch feel curiosity, the whole nine yards. So I grabbed these five. I've already sold two for $90 each, $180. How much did I pay? $31 for all five. Remember 31? This one sold for $150. I am now up to, uh, what's that? $330. And I got two left, two left. So look for tennis rackets. You just kind of have to know and uh, that's all I can tell you. That's all. It just you're gonna have to search and just you'll learn over time. Just learn over time. Like golf clubs, you will learn what is good really quick and what isn't. All right, my last item is gonna be too big. I'm gonna put it up here. Um, it is an amplifier, Harman Kardon, right? Now you know the story behind these. I got four of them. All four came into Savers, and I said, "Hey, I'll take all four with my discounts." It all came out to about a hundred bucks. I think it was Senior Tuesday, so I got thirty percent off, and it came out to like a hundred, hundred four dollars. Now we had an, uh, another video talking about somebody who was saying he wanted to offer me uh, one hundred twenty-five dollars. Uh, including shipping. That would be 100 for the amp and 25 for shipping. And he thought eBay had inflated shipping rates, all that kind of stuff. Well, I sold all four now. All four amps have sold. I'll give you the price that they all sold for. This one here sold for $150 plus $50 shipping, 50 bucks shipping. The one prior to that also sold for $150 plus $50 shipping. They were both out of the box, both 
uh, in really, really good condition. Now, the second one to sell was in the box, but it sold for $199, okay, plus the shipping, $50. You can see the progression here. The fourth one, or the first one that sold, was brand new for $259 plus the shipping, $259, $249. I sold all four, and you have heard me say this over and over. You do not know how many offers I had on these. It was amazing, the offers that kept coming in. My patience paid off. I did not have to go for one offer. I all They all sold for the price I was asking for. That's the patience you need to do it, guys. You have to be patient. You have to be willing to wait. And right there, I got three, four, fifty, three hundred. 500, that seven, yeah, was that 300 plus uh, 200 is 500 plus 249, $749. 750 bucks basically, uh, and my $100. And they sold all within probably a month and a half. All right, guys, there you go. Hey, there's going to be a little bit more video here because I'm going to show you just a few other things. So stick around here and uh, we'll go through those things too. All right, talk to you in a bit. Okay, everybody, we're going to tag on a few items to this video you just did and show you a few more things that we sold prior to that. Uh, I hate to let this stuff go. Uh, sometimes I am so busy uh, and I can't make a video every day. Maybe I make two a week. So uh, in between, there are some sales, and I'm going to try and do some add-ons occasionally because there are some cool items, all right? So let's get right down to it. Let's start off with something very simple. How about this, guys? Canon ink or toner. Uh, Canon is a very sellable ink online. And uh, this is the Chroma Life 100. Any of the Pix Pixma, I think it is, all of that stuff. And what's good about Canon is it doesn't have an expiration date. It never shows an expiration date that I can ever see. I think that's why it sells so well. Where the Epsons and the HPs and all that, they put expiration dates on theirs. And Therefore, it hurts the value, even though, let's say it expires a month out, you have to put a note that says expired. So the value of those are not quite as good as these Canons. Also, be wary of ink and toner resellers. They will jump all over your new ads, generally speaking. You have to look at their feedback and their name to kind of figure out that they are one. Um, they are very picky about the condition of their box of toner or ink, so keep an eye out for that. I put a description in there. If you're an ink or toner reseller, the box pictures are there, and that's the way they come. Sometimes they'll say, put it in another box. Like, this will go in another box, okay? But some of the brother toners, okay, you can just put it in a poly mailer and ship it, and that's what I say I do. Sorry, I'm not going to double box something that should be uh, easily shippable uh, with a poly mailer on it. That's that's the way I roll on that. Up next, uh, this one's boxed. So I'm going to show you uh, that. I'm looking around, make sure I got this one I boxed. Remember I pre-boxed some stuff? So this is a pre-box situation here. I got to make a few uh, adjustments on weight and that. I got to just double check it. Uh, I will mark what it is, and this was some cables. I'm going to put it up here. It is a voltage regulator for an RV with a bunch of uh, 220 cables, a bunch of adapters down to 110, 30 amp, 50 amp, just all kinds of stuff. It was inside here. It was inside this toolbox. You'll see what I paid for it. This toolbox right here from Stanley, I paid $24.99, but I got 30% off because it was Senior Tuesday. This came out, and it was marked 20. I picked it up, and I go, wow, it's pretty heavy. And inside was all the cables and the regulator, the uh, surge protector. And I got $112 plus $24 shipping. Now, on the Canon, I think I forgot to tell you guys, I got $31.50 free shipping. $31.50 free shipping. So, I probably forgot to tell you. I get losing my train of thought. Uh, here goes the pipes. Okay. Hopefully, it won't be too loud, guys. Well, we're just going to have to deal with it. Up uh, next, uh, paperback books. I've been really paying attention to some paperback books, especially now. Uh, garage sales and my bins of books. This one here, The Walton Experience uh, by Travis Walton. And uh, something here, The Incredible Account of One Man's Abduction by a UFO. Paperback. 
How much does it sell for? $100 plus $6 shipping. 100 bucks. Paperbacks, first editions, you see me talk about it all the time. Super, super cool. All right, up next is right here is, uh, this is, I find this a lot. This is Genki, and it's an integrated course in elementary Japanese and the workbook. So there are two of them here, okay? Clean, no writing. They're 40 to $50 solid. And I took an offer on this one, and I got, um, what did I get? Woo, I got, I have it on here somewhere. I got forty-one dollars, forty-one fifty plus free shipping. I know I got forty-one fifty. I don't think I put it on my list. How crazy is that? All right, now let's play a little golf. Golf season is coming, guys. Golf season's coming, and uh, a brand is Titleist. This one actually had the gentleman he uh, punched his initials in there. This is a Volky wedge, SM five. Uh, Volky design, very popular. Pick them up. You got to pick them up cheap. You know, two to five bucks max. Basically, that's my theory on these because this got thirty dollars plus twelve dollars shipping. How do we ship these? These are not going to go USPS. They used to go USPS until they added that that long tube fee. And now, if you ship this via them, twenty seven dollars. I'll guarantee you. But if you ship it via UPS. You're talking about 11 to $14, depending on how long, in that range, not no more. You might even get down to 8 or $7 if it's closer to you. So, yeah, you ship, you just price that out. If it's a wedge, it's like eleven ninety five. If it's a driver, it's $15, $16, and that's kind of how you do that. Uh, out of the bin of books, M14 and M14A1 rifles and rifle marksmanship field manual. Not a ton of money, but if you price it right and get it where you can flip it quickly, that's a key. I got $15 plus $7 shipping. So a uh, quick flip. I only had it less than a week and moved it right out. Um, let's go right here since it's right here. A pile. I got comics. Sometimes I get comics in the bin of books. And if there are a lot of them, I'll lock them up. And this is Sandman. And there's like 41 of them. I always look to see if I can find one, two, three, four that's maybe worth some more money, that kind of thing. And I'll bundle those up and then I'll bundle up a whole lot. So, uh, of ones that just have, you know, two, three dollar value. But anyhow, the Sandman got $50 plus $10 shipping on the Sandman. Uh, so, again, make money any way you can, guys. Now, this one is up next. Boom. The blow mold. Uh, I got these. And I only paid $30 for, I think, four of them. Kind of high, but I knew I could flip them. And I already flipped two. This is now the third one. I have, uh, I think, uh, Mary and, and Jesus and Joseph left. Now, this one is usually a pretty good seller towards Christmas, but I didn't want it to hang around. So I took an offer of $68 plus $45 shipping. The key here, again, get the box the almost exact size of this guy. Don't get it a little bit too big because their cubics are what kill you on the shipping on all of these, like, bigger blow molds and stuff. So I'll make sure that the box is, you know, they, they should get there pretty, pretty good. And I just make sure I get the box about the right size of the unit so it's not too bulky. And uh, it should. It's going to Pennsylvania. I'm very... Um, aware now of the cubics, so I've got to keep that in mind. The cubics are, are running uh, a little bit more expensive from here to Florida, here to Boston, uh, especially with you add weight and cubes, then it's getting it's just getting a little pricey, and I've got to be uh, watching that, and you've got to watch that too. That's where you can get stung is on shipping. I've heard a lot of people who say, "Whoa, I went and go went to go look." And it wiped me out almost completely as far as the profit. So, again, we got to make sure that if you have to, pre-do it. Uh, maybe get an idea of the shape, the weight, and then put it in. They have that eBay calculator. I'll try to put a link below to that, and you can kind of get a general idea. So, you know, you know, mess around with where you think it's going. Some people do calculated shipping. I don't do that. We'll talk about that in another video. So, there you go. All right, guys. Hey. 
Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.